Guys, is it a good idea to use a used Mac Pro in 2023 for video editing, specifically the Mac Pro 6.1, the Mac Pro trash can, and how does it perform in video editing software such as Final Cut? Now guys, I have been using Macs for video editing for my YouTube channel for a long time, and I was especially enjoying using the Mac Pro cheese grater, believe it or not, the Mac Pro 5.1 for my YouTube channel for the last five years. Amazing what you can do if you can just swap pop in a new graphics card that makes a big a big deal very easy even the cpu upgrade was super straightforward in these old macs but how is it with the mac pro 6.1 the mac pro trash can how is the system utilized does it make a difference to these older machines is the mac pro 6.1 better how is the nvme performance in my opinion what effects do plugins have and what are exporting times and timeline performance um, I have here my demo project that I used to do the export test and guys I can say as you can see there are a bunch of tasks open I mean I have the web browser open I'm recording in OBS I have Final Cut open I have the keynote open I have several browser windows open so um, the CPU already uses 24% so there should be pretty much a lot of headroom but let's see what happens when we play here the timeline and I have to say this Mac Pro, despite being a system from 2013, now granted I have the six core, not the base model four core, no problem guys. Final Cut is really optimized. It uses the two AMD D500s just fine. Video memory could be a little bit more, and, but, but as you can see, I'm, I'm doing screen capture. I have a bunch of stuff open. Um, it just works, it's fluid. Uh, I really hope this shows in the screen recording. Um, I'm very happy with this uh, with the system now granted if I scrub through here some plugins if you're using effects and plugins um, they are better optimized some are worse optimized uh, you really have to see this a little bit of a case by case what uh, kind of editing workflow you have what kind of camera codex I'm using a Canon EOS R with H.264 but overall to give you an idea of overall system performance. I took some screenshots of the CPU utilization of a program called iStat Menus. And on average, if I'm not having all these tabs open, if I'm not doing a screen recording like I'm doing right now in the background. So subtract all that uh, and you end up with maybe a load on the CPU of roughly 25% uh, for my workflow. And when I'm exporting the content, uh, maybe it's utilized 50%-ish range so that's pretty okay but some people ask maybe about the nvme speed as you may know the old mac pro cheese grater only had pci 2.0 and when i was looking okay the mac pro 6.1 theoretically the cpu supports pci 3.0 but for some strange reason and also to my annoyance it only connects it via 2.0 so remembering that you can upgrade the nvme very easily here are some benchmarks that i did um, still okay numbers i wish it would have been twice as fast by apple giving us pci 3.0 support on the nvme for some reason they didn't do it i don't know you probably have to ask an apple engineer what the logic is behind that but i mean if you have a full being realistic if you have a, a full hd workflow uh, with a normal file size that should be still fast more than fast than enough so why don't we jump to the next slide because i did also some tests of the project that we just looked at with the export times and the dark blue is the normal h264 which i believe that's what the most people are going to have and the lighter blue is the prores which is a little bit more specialized some cameras some of the newer fujis i think they record ProRes internally. There are some Panasonics, uh, but you have to really hunt for these cameras. This is a little bit specialized, if more specialized. It's nice to have if, if a camera can record ProRes internally. Now, export-wise, if I export this, the Mac Pro 6.1, really good numbers uh, for that project. If it's a, let's say it's a seven minute project it, in H.264, it takes me seven minutes to export if i export the prores since prores is a lower complexity codec it's just it does it in 247 so even faster 
surprisingly than the Apple M1 Silicon. Which brings us to another point that I really want to hammer home. The performance and smoothness and if, uh, speedy export times, that's what you really get when you consider what kind of codec you're using and what kind of source material you have. I would really recommend you to go to this uh, YouTube channel Constant Geekery because there were two gentlemen there that did a really detailed analysis of a, okay, we are using Final Cut, we are using this editing software, we're using that uh, editing software. So they tried different editing softwares and they tried different types of source materials. And as you might guess, the performance really varies. For example, if you want to use the more complex H.265, the more modern H.265 codec, that's not going to work very well on these older systems. Do you then you really should get a new system. And with that, we come to the conclusion. I think the Mac Pro 6.1 is still nice. If you can, someone wants to get rid of this system because they had it for a long time, you can get a bargain bargain deal on it. Um, or you still have it and you just want to upgrade it a little bit, then I think it's a good system with some restrictions, of course, due to the aging graphics cards. But guys, considering how old these graphics cards are, they perform pretty nicely. I'm very happy with it. And uh, if you can work with these quirks and some limitations that the Mac Pro 6.1 trash can has, then it's a good idea. But you should definitely check because if you want the easy way or easy route, then just go with the Mac Studio. But that will be very expensive. I got the Mac uh, Pro 6.1 trash can for 500 bucks. That's nice to test it out and compare it to my older system. I just thought I have an old system already, the cheese creator that works so great. So why don't I compare this to the 6.1? That was my video about this. I see you as a subscriber. And if you want, you can watch some of these other videos on this Mac Pro series.